happy to present non work. Today, I will talk about the development on the prospect of using preformed particle gels. Here, we call the PPG in the talk. That's used for the reservoir conformance con, uh, control. That means we want to use these technologies to improve the reservoir sweep efficiency. Let me see how to the next slide. Mm -hmm. How to go to the next slide. How to move the next, oh, okay. <laughs> so actually preformed particle gel is dried cross-linked polymer powered. It's a kind of a super absorbent polymer. When we put water in it, it can swell several to a few hundred times of original shape, uh, size. The particle size could be ranged from nanometer to micro, micrometer levels. So in the field application, we can select the particle size based on the reservoir conformance problem. If we have big uh, fractures or channels, you know, we use a large size particles. But if we deal with the uh, power, uh, matrix problem or conventional porous media problem, we use the nano or micro particles. So here is the outline for this uh, presentation. First one, I will briefly introduce the current uh, polymer gel technologies that can be used for conformance control. Then I will talk about the three PPG technologies that I developed for the conformance control. First one is a millimeter size the PPG, which size from 10 micrometer for, to a few millimeter. That's a major use for the super K channel blocking. Second one is recross linkable PPGs. That's what we call the RPPG. That's major for the wall with the space condo and the open fractures. The third one is the CO2 resistant PPG and the RPPGs. That's major use for the CO2 flooding and the CO2 uh, storage efficiency improvement. Finally, I will talk about the challenges and the prospect of conformance control research and like application. So in the oil industry, excessive water production is a major problem that results in the decline of the oil production. In the US only, when we produce one barrel of oil, we produce about nine, nine barrels of water. Actually, in the world, this ratio is one to seven, uh, one to three, okay? That means when we produce one barrel of oil, we produce three barrel of water, okay? Actually, the huge amount of produced water production has brought a lot of environmental concerns. And oil companies have paid more than $50 billion per year to treat, you know, the water. The main reason we produce such large amount of water is the water channeling problem through the super K channels, fractures, conduits, immature oil field, gel treatment, has been improved as one of cost effective method to reduce water and gas production. It not only increases the oil recovery 
and also can significantly reduce the water production. Uh, for the gel treatment, you know, usually can classify two types. One is for the near well bore treatment. One is for the far well bore treatment. Also, we call the in depth gel treatment. So, if the excess water caused by the near well bore problem, like this one, you know, you have multiple layer. And also between the layer, you have good barrier. We can inject a small amount of gel either through the injection well or from the production well. That can reduce the permeability of high permeable or fractures. And then after that one, you know, you re-inject re the water again. The water injection profile will change more water go to the low permeable zone. So that can improve our recovery from low permeable zone, okay? So this is uh, for the nearby about treatment. But when your reservoir, you know, the, uh, have no obvious barrier between the layers, like this one, you know, you have cross flow problem inside of the reservoir. You know, if we only inject a small amount of gel, like this one, the gel will block here, definitely. But when we inject the water, water will definitely can, can divert to the low permit zone in the near well ball. But you know, when this go to the in-depth, the water will flow back to the high permit zone. So that means this method cannot really reduce the water production and cannot improve the oil recovery either. So one way, you know, we either can deliver the gel into the in-depth, like this one. Out of this treatment, you know, the profile doesn't change very much, but the really, you know, you can improve the recovery because the water can go here and then sweep the oil from the low permit zone. So this is uh, one major target for the recent research in, for many, in many industry, okay, many, many uh, university. The gel that has been used for the conformance control major including two types. One, is the in situ gels. Another one is called a preformed gels. For the in situ gel system, we just inject the gelant into the formation. Actually, the gelant is composed of a polymer, cross linker, and some other additive. That's the mixture of chemicals. And the gelant can form the gel in the reservoir after pump into the uh, formation because the reservoir have higher temperature. So the overall this gelation occurs in the reservoir condition. So the gel could be very weak, you know, like this one is we call a flowing gel. At this situation, the gel is a, usually have low polymer concentration low cross-link concentration. But uh, some gel may be very strong. You know, if we have fracture, we have to use strong gel. So this gel would be very strong, and uh, we call that rigid gels. For the preformed gel system, gel is formed in the surface facility before we inject it. So the gel is in, you know, will be injected uh, into reservoir. Because the bulk, you know, for the bulk gel, like this kind of gel, it's not easy to be pumped into formation. So usually we cut this gel into the particles. So basically we more inject, you know, we often inject the particle gel into the reservoir. But whatever how we inject this preformed gel, the gel is formed in the surface. So no gelation occurs 
in the reservoir. <coughs> A new trend in gel treatment is to use preformed particle gel for conform control because they can overcome some distinguished drawbacks associated with the in situ gelation system. For the in situ gel, the cross linking reaction are strongly affected by the operation and the reservoir condition. The major components of a gelant is a polymer. So when we pump the gelant into the reservoir, the polymer is easy to be shared and degraded by the pump, well ball, and the porous media. Because in the near well ball, the flow rate is very high. So the, a lot of you know, the polymer uh, will degrade a lot. Another thing, you know, a gelant is composed of uh, multiple component, as I mentioned including polymer, cross-linker, and additives. When this gelant transport through the porous media, you know, different component have different travel speed. So that will create a chromatographic problem, which will result in the gel composition different from the near well ball to far well ball. So that's make the gel quality from the new well ball to the farm well ball will be not the same. At the same time, because the formation, especially for the channels, have a lot of formation water. So when we inject this mixture into the reservoir, the gel and the mixture, mixture okay, will be diluted by the formation water. So that also will reduce the quality of the gel. But for the particle gel, it doesn't have that problem. The gel quality is easy to control. Also, like this particle, you know, it's very easy to disperse in water. So it's easy to be pumped into the formation. So that will much, much convenient for the field application. And the service company and the producer, both like this, we, you know, will save a lot of labor. So this table lists the particle gel that we, that has been developed in our field. So the first one is uh, submicron gels. First developed by the BP, uh, Chevron, and the Naco companies. And then literally, you know, I actually, you know, this company, you know, this product as a sale to the Tiago. No, this co two companies combined together. Its uh, commercial name is called uh, Bright Water. So the particle size usually is uh, less than one micrometers. From the published paper, you can see this product has been used for more than 60 wells in the injection well, okay? For the major, for the in-depth fluid diversion that I mentioned be before. The feature of these particles is just that, you know, this is a thermal activity the product. That means when we inject, you know, the temperature is not high, the particle will not swell too much. But uh, when it was delivered to the in-depth of the reservoir, this particle can swell more because of the thermal effect. So another one is microgels, usually refer to the particle size from 100 micrometer to 10 micrometers. You know, initially this product was developed by the IFP, that's the Institute of French of Petroleum. And lately they sell this product to the company called Parotech. 
you know, in the paper they call this gel as a, as a smart gels. They already use this technology, you know, for more than 10 while treatment. You know, in the, again, this is from the, based on the publications. And also, you know, Petro China and the China University of Petroleum also developed a lot of uh, particle gel. You know, in the paper, they call the SMG smart, uh, actually this is a soft uh, micro gels, SMG, all called uh, micro spheres. This has been more used more than 500 uh, wells. Actually, PPG was initially developed by my research group while I worked in Petro China in 1996. That's a long time ago. So after I moved to the US, you know, in the Caltech while working in the postdoc, I did some work. And after I moved to the Missouri University, ST, you know, my major research just focused on this area. You know, I, I got the support from the uh, DOE and also the industry. And actually, Harley Bowden also, you know, do some work, uh, you know, did some field try use these technologies. Basically, this uh, particle size, usually from 10 micrometers to millimeter size, it has been used more than 10,000 wells for the uh, conformance control. So in this presentation, I major focus on the, these technologies to see where and how it can be best used. So here is the technology, you know, I will introduce separately. The first one I mentioned is the conventional preformed particle gel, PPG. It's the, usually we will refer to the size bigger than 10 micrometer. I have a few SP journal publication on this technology and related research. Another one, recross-linkable uh, PPG, that's called RPPG. You know, we also have one public SP journal publication. Another one, you know, CO2 responsible PPG. You know, right now, you know, this is a, a very hot area for the CO2 sequestration. We have a couple of SP journal publication too. And then, you know, I will briefly introduce the micro gel and nano gels. I have one DOE research award, just a project, you know, just finished two years ago and major focus on this direction. And for the millimeter size of the PPT, you know, as I said, it's major use for the super K channels. That could include the fractures in the natural fracture reservoir, like this one. You know, you have a lot of natural fractures, especially for the carbonate reservoirs. Another one, you know, some reservoir, you know, have direct communication between the injection well to the production well. That is caused by the uh, directional permeability or caused by the open fractures. Another one for the, like uh, this one, uh, this is the solution channel problem major happened in the uh, carbonate reservoir because for the carbonate reservoir, when you inject water for a long time, the void or void space could be connected to each other, then form big channel. And now this is just the one picture from the this guy. Actually, he is, is my collaborator in the my joint industry project. You know, they take a picture for the well, uh, the the well ball, down down use downhole camera, and you, you can see a lot of big fractures in the formation. Okay, so now a large particle major use for this kind of features. Okay. So the particle, like this one, you know, that I mentioned, is dry particles. When we apply the in the field, in the in the in the in just in the on site, you know, we put the water into the particle and then the particle will swell. We just pump the swelling particle into the reservoir. 
actually this particle, the swelling ratio will depend on the brine concentration. Look at this one. I have three pictures. One use a very low salinity. It's only 0 0.005 sodium chloride. It can swell to so big. But when the concentration increase to 10%, it will swell less. So this picture sh show how the particle gel was synthesized. Basically, we use the monomer, just like a, a, chlor a chloramide, just the uh, chemicals, cross-linker and some additive. We mix them together and then polymerize them, form the bulk gel. All the bulk gel formed, we cut into the small particles. And then we dry it, grind it. Finally, we screen, screen it so we can get a different size of particles. As I mentioned, the size could be from 10 micrometers to a few millimeters, depending on what we need, okay. So for the millimeter size of the PPG, you know, what we are interested in interested in is if this gel can really transport through the super K channels or fractures and form the efficient uh, plugging. But uh, for the all the gel treatment, we need to know we don't want the gel go to the low permeable unswept zone. Because once any gel go to this uh, low permeable unswept zone, this will significantly reduce the permeability. So that we call the formation damage problem. So the first, uh, you know, question, you know, we want to uh, answer, you know, if the gel is, uh, can propagate through the uh, high permit zone or channels. So we did a lot of experiment. So first one, you know, in this presentation, I'd only and show the result. What we did use the conduit model. So conduits actually, you know, you may don't know this very, very much. So usually it's defined as a large opening. That's either naturally exist or are aggregated by the mineral dissolution, sand production, or high permitted injection. You know, one so high injection pressure. You know, if you use very high injection pressure, you know, you may create some fractures during the flooding process. Actually, this channel, or we call the conduits, is very common in the loose sand formation, uh, highway oil use formation, also in the Alaska, okay? So this is a work, you know, we already published in this SP journal paper, uh, journals. So for, and this is the model we used to do the lab experiment. First one, we design very simple model, just a fracture model with uh, uh, tapes. That means this is the fracture is closed. And we inject the particle gel to see how it can propagate through the fractures and how it can block the fractures. So we run a lot of experiments and we take some picture like this one. We see out of PVC injected, it can well distribute from the fractures. And the distribution and uh, some dehydration behavior will depend on the fracture width, also also the brine concentration, okay? So, and out of the gel will block here, pack here, you know, the gel can form very strong plugging to the fractures. So for the, if you wanna see more information about how the gel will propagate or how will be dehydrated during the 
transportation. Dehydrated means that means, you know, when we inject the swollen particle, some particle will lose some water to the uh, rock or the front. So that's called a dehydrator. And they can, you can see the paper, and let's see all, all the work, okay, in this paper. And we also, you know, run another type of experiment, use the conduit model. Basically, we use the five feet uh, tubing to represent the conduits. You know, the, we, the tube have different uh, internal diameter, the three different diameter. And we inject swelling gel into the core, and, uh, you know, monitor the pressure change, and also the flow rate, okay? And then, you know, we can do further analysis. So basically, you know, we use the full brine to prepare the gel. As I mentioned, you know, for the, the, the dry gel, you know, we have different swelling ratio at a different uh, brine. If we use a very low concentration brine, like this one, it can swell more than 160 times. And if we use 10% brine, it can only swell 30, about 30 times. That means here, you know, if we have the dry particles, when we put it into different water, it will have different size of the swelling. The question is, uh, which gel will much easier to be injected? This big one or this smaller one? So before we run the experiment, most people think the small gel will be much easier to be injected into the reservoir. And this one, because too big, is hard. But look at the look at our research result. Here's the one result. We use the conduit the opening size is 3.04 millimeter. And we see this is the injection pressure. And this is the injection velocity. Look at this one. And then look at this one, the result. This one, the highest pressure occurs for the low, high salinity propeller pro gel. As I mentioned, this one, actually, the gel is smaller of the swelling. And the gel prepared by the 0.005% of water, even is bigger and the largest one, but the pressure is much lower. So we run more experiment use a different tube. And this is 1.7, another one, 10.9, and we see the same phenomena. That means the gel prepared by the low salinity water, high salinity water, have higher injection pressure. In other words, the injectivity for this gel will be much difficult. Okay, the injectivity will be much hard, much smaller. So that's, you know, we need to know what's the reason. So we test the gel strength out of the volume. We see one the gel swollen in the 10% brine. The G prime, this is the elastic module, will be up to 1300 pass. But when the gel swelled in the low salinity, the gel will reduce to only 500 pass, the G prime. So basically, that means this gel is much more deformable. 
and can much easy to be transported into the in depth of the reservoir than this one. So this one may answer some question from our field. What kind of swelling gel we need injected? Large one or smaller one? Or do we need to inject the gel? We need to control the injection. Uh, so, sorry. Do we need to control the swelling ratio when we inject the gels? Actually, based on the research, we actually this is much easy to be injected. So, and then you know, based on this result, you know, we calculate the resistance factor. So this is the definition. Basically, it's the brain mobility divided by the particle gel in mobility. And we can see this result in the log log scale. The for the each swelling gel, they show linear relationship. Okay, so that means the resistance factor have good power law relationship will gel injection rate. So after we did a lot of calculation and the data uh, analysis, finally we got one equation that uh, shows the relationship of resistance factor. Actually, resistance factor uh, similar as apparent viscosity, okay? Apparent viscosity. But you know, in the uh, gel treatment and the polymer flooding project, we more use the resistant factor. So the the resistant factor is uh, the function of the gel strength and the shear rate, okay? So this equation can be used to predict gel propagation through the conduits. So after we know the gel can transport through the power, the large conduits, and also can form good plugging, and we want to know if this gel will penetrate or damage the, un uh, the unswept zones. That's where, you know, it reach off the oil. So basically, we published another PSP paper. You know, in this paper, we just evaluate how deep the gel can penetrate into the matrix and what method we can use to remove the damage. So basically, we use the almost same model, just still, we just use the core holder, you know, we put the core inside. And then, you know, we inject the gel and see how much the gel can penetrate into the uh, pores. So this, after the research, we found, you know, the big particle gel can only form the either external fill cake on the rock surface, or even it can penetrate into the, uh, the rock, but the penetration will be very shallow. That means it can form the internal fill cake. So the depth for the internal cake and the external cut as the external cake together, usually less than a few centimeters. So in the lab, you know, we did uh, some experiment of the, you know, the da gel damage the matrix. We cut the surface, you know, like uh, if we inject, uh, you know, if we cut the rock, you know, injected by the low salinity propellant swelling gel, look at this one, out of seven, six cut, that means out of we cut a 1.8 centimeter rock, the gel, the, you know, the core can recover its permeability to more than 98, 95%. That means the gel will 
did not really penetrate more than 1.8 centimeter. But if we use the 10% of brown prepared gel, the gel only go to the core in less three millimeters. So that means this strong gel, low swelling gel, how less damage to the formation. Because this damage is very shallow, we can easy, it's very easy to use acid to remove the surface cake or the damage. So based on these two papers, we can conclude, you know, the PPG can be used in the red with the uh, big channels, you know, can solve the condo the problem. And they can pro it can propagate with high permeability very well, but have no significant damage on the low permeability. You know, here just to summarize the applications of PPG in in the field. You know, first one, because this technology is very simple, in the field operation, you know, the preparation is very easy. We just put the particle into the mixing tank or mixing tank, and then we just directly pump the gel into the formation. So it saves a lot of labor compared to the traditional polymer gel treatment. For the traditional polymer gels, you know, we need to uh, uh, dissolve the polymer and mix the polymer cross-linker and other, other additive together. And that will take a lot of time. Also, you know, when we prepare that kind of gel, gel end, you know, the quality, you know, the water quality, you know, need to strictly controlled. But for this PPG, it's very robust to the formation water to any type of water. So any water will be okay for this uh, gel treatment. And this gel, you know, has, has been applied more than 10,000 wells, you know, like uh, other chemical ER technologies. You know, this is also most used in China. You know, this technology has been major including this few type of reservoir. First one is mature oil field without natural fractures. Like uh, Da Qing oil field, Da Qing oil field is uh, in China, is the largest uh, oil field uh, of polymer flooding in the world. You know, they don't have natural fracture, but they really have big channels. We usually inject a very large size from one millimeter to a few millimeter particle into the reservoir. And we didn't see the injectivity problem. And also some reservoir with the natural fracture or hydraulic fractures. Definitely this PPG, you know, large size PPG can be easily used for the fracture reservoir, whatever is carbonate or sandstone reservoir. Another good thing, you know, for this uh, PPG, because it's very robust, it can resist the very high salinity, high temperature conditions. So it's kind of, you know, right now the current product can resist the more than 120 C, and the brown salinity is up to 30%, okay? And another thing, you know, for the gel treatment, you know, most of the people and uh, uh, producer worry about the negative effect because uh, the, once the gel go to the low permeable zone, will significantly damage the formation. Fortunately for this technology, because the gel is not penetrated to the matrix very far, you know, if we inject big particles, okay, still we are millimeter we talk about a millimeter size particle. So the negative effect is rarely founded. Also in the field application, 
you know, we can use a trial and error method. What does that mean? That means, you know, for many reservoirs and then also many wells, we don't know exactly know if they have fracture or channels, especially for many mature oil field. Even initially, they don't have fractures, but out of long water flooding or CO2 flooding, it still have maybe create some fractures, but we cannot uh, know exactly. In the field, we can just inject the gel into the well. If your reservoir have no fractures, you know, the gel will just pack on the well ball, not go into the matrix or the formation. And out of the injection, if you see the pressure go up very fast, we just stop injection and flush out the well ball. But if you have fractures in the reservoir, you just, you know, the gel will go to the fractures and create a uh, plugging. So that's what we call the trial and error acid. You know, this is a few figures just to show where the particle has been injected. So basically, you know, we, we you know, we summarize the publication data, more than 700 treatment data from the publications. So we classify the unfractured sandstone reservoir um, this refers to initially no fractures, okay, or no hydraulic fractures. And consolidated uh, sandstone reservoir, maybe there is a loose sand, and some fractured uh, carbonate sandstone reservoir. You can see the application, the temperature wise, you know, the technology has been used from 32 to 126 centigrade C. And the salinity from very, uh, very low, only 1,700, up to 30%. And the permeability of the reservoir, you know, from very low permeability, point five, to very high permeability, up to six dasi, okay? This is point five milli dasi, this is six dasi. And the permeability variation, that's referred to the heterogeneity of the reservoir. You can see many use, many of, use in the reservoir with uh, high heterogeneity conditions. Oh, I see. So that's the technology, you know, what we, we did a lot of research, okay? Here, I will present another technology that I recently developed, major supported by the industry uh, consortium that we call the GIP, you know. We develop a re-cross-linkable preformed particle gels. Here, we call the RPPG. R is a re-cross-linkable. Basically, you know, when we applied the traditional PPG in the reservoir, we didn't see the injectivity problem, but we really see out of the particle gel injection, the water injection pressure didn't increase a lot. Oh, maybe it's too, too slow, right? Anyway, okay. <coughs> so, uh, that's me, you know, the particle gel, PPG, it cannot really block the formation, especially when you read about how open fracture or conduits. So that's we develop a new technology. This is the RPPG. When you put the water, still can swell. But after it pumped into the reservoir, the swelling particle can recross link from the buckle gel, like this rubber like gel. So this could be like this one. So basically, this is the features of the particles. Basically, right now, you know, we have the product can provide a uh, conform the control from the 22 to 120 C uh, reservoir condition. We also have publication here in this paper. The major, you know, the mechanism for this technology just, you know, we pump the gel, 
into the reservoir, especially in the fracture. After the pumping, it will swell and pack together. After packing, you know, it forms the buckle gel and form the uh, strong plugging. So this technology major was designed to solve the void space conduit, open fracture, wormhole, and the solution channel problem. So here is the one test, the call front test result, what we did in the lab. You know, we compare the RPPG, the new PPG, and the traditional PPG. You can see this is a breakthrough pressure. That means, you know, after we put the gel into the fracture, we inject the water, see after to see how much pressure it can hold. For the traditional PPG, I mean, for the new PPG, it can hold 238 PSI, but for the traditional PPG, only can hold about 50 PSI. After water breaks through, we continue to inject water. You know, the water pressure still for this one still go to up to 184, but for the traditional PPG, you know, this will go down to 9 point PSI. So this is just show the result, you know, if we, we use the traditional PPG, it will not recross link. After we inject the water, the gel will be pushed out and create new channels. So that means it cannot fully block the fractures. But the new gels, because it forms strong gel, buckle gel, it can, water will not easily pass through this gel. And this just shows the, you know, blocking efficiency. So we use this term called the residual resistant factor. That's the ratio of the rock initial permeability and divided by the permeability of the blocking. You can see, you know, for the RPPG, it can reduce the permeability more than 10 million times. And for the PPG, you know, it can still reduce the permeability very much, but not that high, only 10,000 times. And here is just the one application of RPPG uh, conducted by the conical Philips, you know, in the, you know, in their oil field, actually in the Alaska, you know, they have horizontal well, well problem, also have conduit problem, they call the MBE, conduit problem. That means this, you know, when they inject water, water just directly go to this conduit, will produce in just a few hours. So because of this kind of the problem, when you inject water, water will not go to the oil zone, the matrix. So you have to find a way to block it. Initially, they use cement. They found that the result is not good. And then they change it to the PPG, traditional PPG. And uh, the, block, you know, the treatment result are getting much better. But uh, even that case, the PPG treatment success rate is still lower than 50, 40%. And then we developed the new technology, IPPG, and they use this uh, technology for more than 17, 17 wells in last two years. And they said, you know, they already have the improved recovery, you know, success rate, successful rate for more than 23%. So they are still using this technology. Another one, you know, one interest just, you know, for the CO2 resistant PPG and RPPG. This is a very important project right now, I think, because many company definitely will go to the CO2 operation. You know, whatever for the oil field and for the CO2 sequestration purpose. But you know, we did a lot of experiment using the in situ gel, traditional situ gel, and the traditional PPG to see if they are stable in the CO2 condition because CO2 is acid condition, acid. So we found, you know, 
here is one result. You know, we put the swelling PPD in the conduits and then inject CO2. We see this CO2 can dry out this swelling gel. So that means the CO2 can, you know, the swelling gel cannot really block the CO2. Also, you know, we put uh, some in situ gel, the traditional polymer gel, into the white cell and see if the gel will dehydrate. That means if we can lose water. We also see, you know, the gel could lose a lot of water. That means the traditional gel will not stable at the reservoir condition. Okay, this is what we did. You know, this is another result from another student. And so we tested now a CO2 resistant RPPD. And in the lab, we found that, you know, whatever we use the nitrogen, CO2, and the medicine in the gel, all the, you know, can be stable in the, all the conditions. It doesn't lose a lot of water. And also the gel strength will not change very much. Interesting thing, you know, you can see this is the sample we have, you know, after we release the gas from the valve, we can see if we use the in nitrogen, you know, gel will not swell a lot. But if we use CO2, sounds like the, the, the gel absorbed a lot of CO2 and after we release the pressure, you know, the gel will swell a lot. So that's maybe the one reason why, you know, the gel stress increases a little bit out of the CO2, as opposed to the CO2. And this is another one, you know, we develop, it's called a CO2 responsive preformed particle gel. This gel, we can control the particle size from 60 nanometer to few millimeters. Basically, you know, this gel, you know, still can swell into the water. That means if we put the dry gel into water, you know, it can swell like this one. This is the initial swelling ratio, you know, at a different brine concentration. Okay, this is the this the water, this is the one percent brine. So if we don't do anything, you know, they just keep this swelling ratio. But if we put this gel into the CO2 condition, and this gel can further swell to this one, you know, and for low salinity, high salinity condition, they can swell here. So that's what we call a CO2 responsible PPT. For this gel, you know, we can deliver the particle to the in-depth by using water. Out of that one, you know, we can expose the gel to the CO2. That can increase the swelling ratio, then it can increase the plugging efficiency. So this project actually was supported by the uh, DOE. You know, I published, I summarized this result in this SP, uh, SP uh, conference paper. And finally, you know, we did, uh, you know, some test, you know, some research on the micro gel and the nano gel. That's a major use to solve the matrix problem, just the conventional porous media, with the probability maybe few micrometer to a few hundred uh, millimeter. So mainly that you use to treat this problem, you know. First one, you know, you have multiple layer, but have cross flow, no barrier between the layers. We want to deliver the particle into the in-depth. Another one, you know, if you rather will have directional permeability of fracture in one direction, we also try to deliver the particle into the in-depth. Because the particle is very small, so it's easy to be transported into the matrix. So also we did a lot of research on this area. We have a few publications available. So this just uh, give you the um, uh, information about what kind of, what kind of nano gel available. 
first one is a very homogeneous nano gel. It's synthesized by the polymer and the one cross linker. Okay. And another one is called a interpenetrating network nano gel. It have multiple uh, cross linker and also maybe multiple monomer. So this uh, make the gel much stronger. Another one called a cow shell nano gel. Basically, we put the gel on in the middle of the this one, and then coating this uh, gel. Basically, you know the coating materials usually is very strong. That means the gel will be very rigid at the very beginning. So after we deliver deliver this rigid gel, coated gel into the reservoir, especially when it goes to the in depth, we hope the shell can be dissolved, so that can release the particle gel, the nano gel, and it can further swell to plug the formation. So that's a lot of research ongoing in this direction. So here, just the, you know what I thought, you know what challenge we have and what the prospect about the particle jacket conformance uh, technology. First one, you know, we already have successful application for the PPG in high temperature reservoir, that's a, but the highest only is 120. We need more PPG or particle gels for the really high temperature, like 150, even higher, like a 207, that's for the geothermal project. And also, you know, we can develop some combination technology with like a surfactant and the particle gels for the carbon reservoir because surfactant can improve the matrix, uh, uh, can change the matrix availability. So it can improve the oil recovery from matrix. But the particle gel can plug big channels. So the combination will significantly improve the oil recovery. Also, you know, we need to have more technology or more research for the CO2 flooding project. And another thing, you know, for the particle gel treatment for the production well, currently most of the PPG used in the injection well, but how to evaluate and to see if the gel can be used for the production well treatment, that also have a lot of research ongoing. Okay. Another one just that, you know, for the nano and the micro gel uh, gels, you know, a lot of research ongoing, but the most focus on the chemical part, just the synthesization. We don't have much research available about how this particle can transport through the parts of media and how much plugging it can be out of swelling. So that's the need a lot of effort in this area. Also, we don't have good simulator available because right now the particle transportation mechanism and the blocking mechanism is not very clear. Okay, so this is what I talk. Basically, you know, I summarize the advantage of PPG over traditional uh, polymer gels for the conformal control. And then I introduce the millimeter size particle gels and tell why it can be used in the reservoir with high permitted channels. And then I introduce the two novel technology that we develop. One is uh, supported by our industry member that's called the RPPG for the void space condo and open fracture problem blocking. Another one supported by the DOE, major for the CO2 flooding and the storage efficiency improvement. You know, finally, I talk about the conformance control research and application, major for the uh, particle gel challenge and the prospect. Okay, this is some publication related to my talk. If you have more interest, you can either check this paper or you can send an email to me, you know, I can answer you. Finally, I will get, uh, you know, acknowledge the support from the company. This fall of our 
uh, consortium member and also definitely my research get uh, support from you or the DOE. Actually, you know, in the last 10 years, I got a file project. Also, the yesterday they noticed me have another project coming. That's for the geothermal project using PPD. Okay, that's all for my talk. It's a little bit long, longer. <laughs> Any questions? Thank you, Professor Bai, for uh, <clears throat> a very interesting presentation. Uh, and congratulations on uh, on the news uh, you mentioned. Um, so we've got uh, time for uh, questions. Uh, if you have a question, please you uh, raise your hand and I'll call on you. Uh, you can unmute, ask your question, but then remember to mute your microphone once again. Uh, we have a question from Ilias. Uh, yes, uh, thank you uh, so much for this very nice presentation. So if I understand correctly, uh, this technology, the preformed particle gels, you actually recommend it for in-depth fluid diversion, not the uh, near well bore that the conventional uh, gel treatments are used for. So this means that... It uh, means that, that that's uh, not a really, you know, for the millimeter size, what I mentioned uh, from 10 micrometer to millimeter size, measure for the near well ball conformance or if your reservoir have fracture or conduits, that's the ready connected between the injection well and the production well. So for that condition, whatever you have to, you know, block all the channels. For the nano gel or micron gel, major for the in-depth fluid diversion. Hmm. I see. Uh, so that's the case where we have cross flow between the reservoir layers. And um, if we are to do an in-depth uh, treatment, then I assume that would require large volumes, right? Yeah, that's how I kind of say, you know, that's two, two kind of uh, idea one idea just that you know like as you said you inject a really large amount of gel and make sure it can maybe can uh, placed from the near wire ball to the far wire ball but another idea just that you know we just inject a relative not as really small but a relative small amount of gel and we need to try to some method to deliver the gel into the in-depth like this one okay we just yes. deliver you know, auto inject a, a slug of micro gel and you use water or any other materials to displace this one to the in-depth so in this condition you know we don't really need a lot of gels but frankly this is very hard to be realized i mean usually it's not very practical even a lot of people you know put a lot of efforts in this direction i see uh, uh yes i was wondering about the cost that's why i asked about the large volumes but uh, you also mentioned that uh, there is a very good chance for the um, for these uh, type of gels to actually uh, damage the formation or uh, block a little bit the uh, uh, the unswept uh, layer that also has the residual oil, and then you would need to uh, pump some acid to remove that damage. Is that correct? Yeah, that's uh, what I mentioned. The one you know I talk about here, you know, what? you can use some acid or some oxidizer to remove the uh, da surface damage. Yes, correct. Okay, so yeah, that would also increase the cost of the uh, treatment. Uh, another question has to do with the strength of the, uh, once you place the gel, uh, the, the, does it develop, uh, keep developing strength while in situ, or is it done and you can still open your injector once the treatment is, the, the treatment is done and the gel has been placed? Can you open your injector and start injecting, or do you need a shutting period for it uh, to develop strength? Sorry, I didn't get you very much. Can you repeat? Yes, of course. Uh, so usually, 
when you place that okay. gel uh, in in the reservoir, uh, the layer that you want to block, it, it acts as a flow diverter. And you want to make certain that you're not going to produce it uh, because if you have an injector and then a high pressure drop between the injector and the producer, uh, you might start producing the gel. So you want to make certain that the gel has enough strength to stay in place. Okay. That's a really good question related to my this talk. This is a, this talk, you know, because uh, for the condos problem here in the Alaska, as you said, you know, when they inject the traditional PPD, they found, you know, even the cement, when they inject the cement, you know, the, the cement and the traditional PPD will produce the, from the production wells. Mm. So mm -hmm. that means the gel is not a, uh, that's actually is will be damage the pump for the pro, pro, in the production well. Yes. So that means the gel strength is either not strong enough or uh, maybe you know have some other problem like uh, the traditional PPG you know just the particle with just this first particle right not how good plugging. So that's why you know we derive the RPPG because after the form the auto deliver the gel into the channels and it can reform the bulk gel stuck together like the rubber just some something like a rubber so it will yes. not uh, block uh, produce anymore yeah that's a really mm -hmm. question very practical question yeah yes uh, thank you. One, one, just last one, one last question. Because I, uh, if I understood correctly, these uh, technologies you do not recommend them for CO2 floods yet. Is that correct? Mm, for the traditional gel, yes, because uh, we did some test. The traditional polymer gel, whatever in situ gel or PPG, doesn't work in the CO2 condition. But we really develop mm -hmm. a lot of a, a few type of PPG that can resist the CO2. That means it can be used right now. We have the, you know, the product technology available right now. Okay. So this uh, is the one. This one and this is another one we have. Yeah. Do you have any indication mm -hmm. on the duration of the uh, treatment? Say that you uh, create an effective plug. You divert flow. Do you have any indication of how long that would last? Oh, that's you know depend on the you know two things. One, you know, we do the thermal stability test in the CO two condition, just in the oven. So that's no problem. You know, we can resist the uh, one year more than one year. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very and, much. And uh, for the for the you know for the field try, we don't have field try for the new product. But uh, right now, Oxy is uh, trying to do it uh, maybe next year. Yeah. Understood. Thank you very much. I appreciate your uh, your presentation. Good questions. Make my clear, printed much clearer. Okay. Thank you. All right. More uh, questions uh, for Professor Bai. All right, I think uh, Dr. Liu, uh, you're, you're up next. All right, uh, Baojun, uh, very nice to see you here virtually. Thank you. Uh, wish you could pay a visit to us, you know, uh, physically, but during the <laughs> pandemic, it will not be possible. Well, uh, maybe next time. Uh, well, our great uh, 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 presentations, as always. Uh, Thank you. Well, uh, I, I have a, a, a question. Can you, uh, well, or comments, can you talk a, a little bit more about uh, the cost of the, you know, those different types of uh, PPG you are, you are talking about today in your presentation, just briefly? <clears throat> okay, for the traditional PPG, you know, just the price, same as the uh, polymer. polymer. Not a big difference. For the new RPVG and the CO2 resistant PVG, a little bit more expensive. But the you know the company sells them. I mean, for from the manufacturer for from the composition part, okay, it's a little bit expensive than the uh, polymer polymer itself. Maybe maybe twenty 
or to 50% more. But the company usually sell is a little bit more because uh, the market is not that big as the polymer. You understand me? Because the manufacturer maybe, mm -hmm. you know, usually ask more money. Especially like uh, uh, for the traditional PPG, you know, I heard that even, you know, Hollywood didn't sell that one in the Middle East. Maybe the price is two or three times of the <laughs> traditional polymer. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about uh, CO2? Uh, that one. Uh, same thing. Same as the recross link particle gel. It's not a big difference. Okay. Okay. And you have any? Do you have any data from the oil field that uh, per per every uh, incremental oil recovered and how much you have to spend or how much? Uh, how, how, how much money you have to spend on the PPG and uh, how much uh, PPG you have to use per per every incremental barrel of oil? That's a good question. Money. That's a really good question. You know, that's uh, in the US, they, you, the company usually prefer to use uh, in general very small amount of gels, like a conical Phillips. They initially only inject uh, Two tons. That's maybe about a four thousand pounds of polymer. And right now, you know, because they found you know more injection is better. So right now they inject maybe four tons or five tons of gels. They usually inject in the very high concentration, like a ten percent. And this one just the one to two hour. To finish pumping, and for the in for them, you know, for the U.S. for for the, them, the chemical cost is really really small amount small amount compare all the treatment, because the pumping fee is really expensive. Okay, so that means for them they said okay the gel even a little bit more expensive than the polymer. Or then the, even for the tradition, than the traditional gels, but uh, you know the my the 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 amount we use not very much. But uh, in China, they use this gel. Use for the major for the in depth or large amount of treatment purpose. They inject the particle in very low concentration, like a point five. To maybe to one percent, uh, sometimes even lower to point two percent, and they inject the gel for sometimes is a few months up to two years. So that means each well may inject maybe up to fifty, even I see some sixty tons for each wells. Okay, so that's the totally different. Uh, Idea to different direction. All right. Uh, another question. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, well, Doctor, uh, we've got two other uh, students uh, waiting in, uh, or or folks uh, with their hands raised. Is it okay if we circle back to your last question? Oh uh, uh, yeah, sure, sure. All right. Uh, so, Shaoru uh, Liu. Hello. Hi. Yes. Okay. There may be audio uh, problems with your microphone. Uh, we'll circle back to you, Shaoru. Uh, you how? Hello, professor. Hello. Uh, hello, professor. I have actually uh, have some questions about the. Uh, you in your presentation you mentioned that the uh, the salinity will uh, affect the the performance for the uh, for the uh, PPG uh, treatment, and uh, you suggest to use uh, the lower uh, salinity uh, grain to uh, inject the uh, PPG. And what about uh, we use just use fresh water? Will that be better? What what what, what water? Use water. Uh, 
you know, for fresh water, you know, usually it's not available in the field or you need to uh, use a truck to deliver the fresh water. Mm -hmm. So the particle gel, you know, we usually, you know, use just the produce water to do it. So actually, you know, what I said, you know, the particle swelling ratio will depend on the uh, brine salinity. If in the fresh water, it will swell more, that's what you said, as you understand. Mm -hmm. If we use high salinity, use the, it will swell less. But actually, you know, to keep a uh, uh, good uh, performance, uh, performance, you know, usually you can inject uh, the gel, use high salinity water, and after deliver to the reservoir, you can inject the regular water. Maybe that can further improve the swelling inside of reservoir. So okay. that's some different people have different way. Like uh, again, like uh, the US, they just uh, put the gel into the water and then don't wait the gel swelling and just directly inject the gel into the um, reservoir. But uh, if we do the large amount of treatment, sometimes, you know, we want to swell the gel and then inject it. So in that condition, as you, as I mentioned, you know, because swallowing gel have much better injectivity. So that's what we did, yeah. Did I answer your question? Yeah, and also uh, uh, with the uh, uh, lower uh, salinity, with the, the swells, uh, Gel, it will uh, also increase the opportunity to, uh, uh, like, to damage the uh, unwanted uh, zone, right? Like the lower yeah, salinity yeah. zone. Correct. And if you use, uh, yeah, that's true. Actually, that's the, you know, if we use the more, balance between that, that two parts. Yeah, that's you need how to smart to, because that's one not only depend on the. Uh, swelling ratio also depend on the rock permeability. What's the unswept zone permeability? Yeah, we need a, you know when we do the test uh, in the field, maybe we need to try to do some lab test to see how it could damage the formation based on the matrix permeability. Okay, uh, and. Also, uh, like uh, the purpose for this one, like uh, to increase the sweep uh, efficiency and also to decrease the water cut. And uh, I believe that, if I understand correctly, uh, it will not uh, only a once treatment, right? It, it it should be like a circle treatment. The water cut will uh, increase after the treatment, like several several years or some uh, several months. After that, and we need to redo this kind of treatment. Why? That's uh, definitely, you know, the, for the naturally, definitely after the treatment, you know, sometimes the, the water will go up because uh, even we now gel is very stable in the channels, mm -hmm. you know, your water will break through from another layer or another direction, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that definitely will increase the uh, water cut will increase again somehow later. But that's not the mm -hmm. cause of the plugging issue, you know. You out of that one you need to uh, inject more gels. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And All right. when we do the third round, will that performance uh, get uh, be decreased or we, we can get similar performance when we do the second round now? So oh, that uh, depends. On Go, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Professor. We're running out That's of time, but maybe we can take this. Yeah, yeah they depend on the reservoir condition. That's, you know, just the, if you do the simulation, you can do it. You know, out of this uh, blogging, right? You have one channel, you block, and then you do the uh, second round of treatment, block another channels, and then what happened? So that's uh, usually with uh, more times of treatment, your performance will get in worse. That's a really common, yeah. Because you oh, have okay. less unsurvival zone available, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Uh, thank you, Professor Bai, and thank you uh, uh, to all uh, attendees uh, for another uh, graduate seminar. Um, and uh, I wish you all uh, a great weekend. You too. Thank you. Oh, I All right. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's uh, uh, really interesting uh, applications and uh, a lot of interesting rheology. Uh,